Your survival, intact, on our roads, is heavily dependent on the driving capability of others. You may be a good driver, even a very good driver. But not everybody is. And that's where this film will help you to stay safe. In the next 62 minutes, we will consider 50 everyday driving scenarios, which can often conclude with an incident. If you are lucky, the incident might just entail repairs at A&E for you, and at your garage for your vehicle. Sadly not everyone will be as lucky. Supporting the 50 scenarios there are 350 plus live driving clips, and animated sequences, showing what can happen in the blink of an eye. The film is also packed with interesting facts and stats relating to driving risks, and the consequences for poor or for bad driving. By the end of your viewing of this film, you will probably improve your chances of incident avoidance by 20% to 30% or even more. For less than the cost of a single driving lesson, or a Chinese takeaway meal for two. This film will be of benefit to all drivers, of every experience level. Purchase it as a special gift for someone you care about. If you have already been required to attend any of the driver awareness courses, purchase this film in order to avoid adding more points to your driving license. This film will help you avoid future penalties, and remember you will not be offered a driving awareness course as a route to escaping points again. All recipients will thank you for caring about their welfare, and they will tell their friends about you, who provided this unique gem of advice to them. And if there are multiple drivers in your household, the value delivered can double or triple. Volume purchases can be customized to your own company brand and message, with personalization options both in the film content, and on the product packaging. Welcome. We would like to introduce you to a new and very innovative product which seeks to assist drivers all drivers, but especially those who may have recently passed their driving test and are new to the road and new to driving alone. If you have been given this product as a gift by a friend or partner, it is not intended as a subtle message that they think you need help as a driver. It is because they care about your well-being and because there are many bad drivers on our roads. And this guide will help you avoid the consequences of encountering them. This guide will help any driver of the responsibility involved in getting behind the wheel of what is effectively a lethal weapon. If you have been given this product by your employer, it is because they want you to be safe when you are traveling around the region or even around the country in pursuance of the company's business or in simply getting to your place of work using your own transport. This shows you that your employers care about your well-being and by giving you this product, they want to improve your chances of staying out of hospital or worse. All of us need reminders about some best practice when it comes down to even routine driving tasks. Some simple things will get us back on track. This guide of 50 topics will help. It will take no more than 50 minutes to view end to end. One, eyes and neck. Your eyes and your neck have equal importance, right? Okay, eyes are obvious, but if you want to stay alive, you need to use your neck all of the time you are at the wheel. Here's a rule. Nothing should ever overtake you on the outside or the inside that you did not know was coming. If indeed that does happen, it means you are not using your neck enough. And one day, you will likely find yourself moving out to overtake the vehicle in front and driving into something about to pass you. There is always a blind spot, but if you are using your neck as well as your eyes and mirror, you should always be aware of what is about to pass you on either side. Two, distance. 
Distance matters. The closer you are to the vehicle in front, the less you can see ahead and the less time you have to react to anything. The faster you are going, the more this matters. And when traffic comes to a halt, even at traffic lights, leave a big enough gap between you and the vehicle in front that would allow you to drive out to avoid something that is about to crash into you from behind. One day, this habit will save you from serious injury or death. 3. Look several vehicles ahead all the time. Always be taking account of vehicles 3 or 4, even 5 in front. If they are braking, you will see the lights, or if they are swerving all over the road, then you should already be getting ready to slow or stop, or risk doing the same and having to swerve to avoid other vehicles. Then you need to consider what's behind you and whether they have seen the looming incident. 4. View ahead blocked by HGV or van or bus. A big vehicle such as a HGV or even a van is in front of you. Your forward vision is seriously reduced. So stay 50% further back than you would if you were following a car. 5. A skid or an aquaplane. This can happen to even the best of drivers. Don't slam the brakes, which is your instinct, so try to avoid your instinct. Ease your foot off the accelerator. Steer gently into the direction of the skid until grip returns. If you are lucky, you will get away with no collisions. If you hit the brakes hard, you will likely lose all control and where you finish up is out of your hands, at home or in hospital or worse, toss the coin. You will encounter a skid if you drive. It's just a matter of when. Look out for standing water on any road, but especially on motorways or any faster stretches. If you see what looks like a small lake, initially just ease off the accelerator to improve your chances of keeping control, if the worst happens. If you are pushed for time, pause the film here, note the timeline point, and restart here later. Six, routine TLC for your vehicle. Tires and brakes, wipers and washers, and lights. When you really need these, you want them to work. Otherwise, you may die, and so may others. Keep all of these always in good maintenance. Monthly check of tyres as a minimum. Weekly check of brakes. Find a spot where there are no other vehicles around and carry out an emergency stop to test the state of the braking system. Wipers should be replaced if there is any regular smearing caused by the rubbers eroding. Vision is imperative when at the wheel. No windscreen water will mean no vision. If there's suddenly a dirty stretch of road, it's too late when you find you are driving blind. The inside of your windscreen should also be kept clean. Bright sunlight hitting a greasy internal screen will make you blind to the road ahead. And this can happen quickly and at high speed as you follow a gentle bend in the road. It can be scary. Keep the internal windscreen clean at all times. If your side lights are not functioning, you are at serious risk of not being seen on roads with no street lighting. For the cost of a bulb, you risk a head-on incident. Not clever. Check very regularly, front and back. Check that your spare wheel is inflated once per month and before any significant journey. Your tyres and their importance. If any of your tyres are illegal, you risk potential loss of control if grip to the road surface is lost. If all of your tyres are illegal, you are at significant risk of an incident. 
In this case, you will be awarded three penalty points per illegal tire, which means an immediate driving ban, plus you will incur a fine of up to £2,500 per illegal tire. That's a fine of up to £10,000 in total. The level of fine is influenced by any incident consequences to other road users caused by the illegal condition of your tires. A survey of drivers, commissioned by Halfords in September 2019, showed some alarming statistics. 65% of drivers do not know the minimum legal tread level of 1.6 mm across three quarters of the tire surface. 13% admitted having knowingly driven with bald tires. 27% had not checked their tires during the previous three months. 42% do not know how to check their tire pressure, nor what the correct pressure should be. Our thanks to our eight product sponsors who helped us to bring this film to you. Seven, flat tire, now what? If you drive, you must know how to change a wheel on your car. Know what a jacking point is and why it matters. Know how to tighten the wheel nuts. There is an important sequence to tightening and how you need to do this both with your car still on the jack and again as you lower the wheel to contact with the road. It's not rocket science, but you are in danger if you get stuck somewhere and you have to do this yourself. You have to know the risks of getting it wrong if you are forced to change a wheel yourself. If you want to drive, you must learn how to do this and practice it a couple of times or more. Eight, but I had right of way. This tip will one day save your life and potentially anyone else who is in your car. Never assume that because you have right of way that other vehicles have also spotted that you have it. At any junction, any crossroads, any roundabout, any traffic lights, always look both ways as you emerge through the crossroad or enter the roundabout. Some roundabouts are controlled by traffic lights, so this rule applies equally here. One day you will avoid death or serious injury if you always assume something might be coming the other way, even where you have clear precedence and right of way. It is no good being dead and saying it was his fault. Check out YouTube to see some horrific accidents at supposedly safe crossroads controlled by traffic lights. Don't become a statistic. Nine. Joining a fast road. There are many situations where you are required to filter onto another road, often on a dual carriageway or motorway, but even single carriageway roads have these as well. Always signal your intention to join. Judge the speed of the traffic you are joining and slow down or speed up to join seamlessly and into a gap. If you are on the main road and someone else is joining in from the left, let them. Or better, move out early to make it easy for them and for you. Some slip roads appear to have two lanes to join. Never be in an overtaking manoeuvre position as you reach the main road, because two cars joining in such circumstances could cause you serious injury or death sooner or later. 10. But why don't you just go? Roundabout approach and entry. Do not assume that the car in front of you will pull out onto the roundabout even when there is clearly plenty of time and space to do so. Get this wrong and you will drive into the back of the vehicle in front as your attention is looking to the right and it will be your fault completely. Keep your attention to the front until the vehicle in front has clearly fully emerged. 
Accompanying this film is a 16-page booklet. This booklet contains all 50 driving guide scenarios. We suggest that you keep it in your vehicle. When you have a spare moment, perhaps when you stop for a coffee at a service station, have a refresh read of a few of the tips. The ones you read, might just include the one that you are about to encounter. If you don't have much time right now, pause the film here, and restart back here later. Eleven. Driving to the limit. Read speed. Try to know always the speed limit you are currently in. Otherwise, points await you. And in this game, points do not make prizes, and you will pay highly for points for a long time. On some of these guide points, there is quite a lot of content to digest. Click the pause control to take a little extra time, if you want to read in full. There is a lot of info but it is, very useful info. You will have seen that a number of urban stretches of road, have been nominated as restricted speed zones, with a maximum speed allowed of 20 miles per hour. Often, this relates to the proximity of a school, or to the presence of congested access, in areas with high volumes of pedestrians, often including children. It is a sad fact that half of all road incident injuries, to youngsters under 17, occur in 20 miles per hour zones. Every year, over 1,200 youngsters, aged under 17, are hit, within 20 miles per hour traffic zones. Colliding with a pedestrian, at 20 miles per hour, has a low 1.5% chance of resulting in a death. Conversely, colliding with a pedestrian at 30 miles per hour, has a much higher, 8% chance of resulting in a death. This is a five times greater risk. Surveys have shown that one third of drivers, do not slow down, when entering a speed restricted 20 miles per hour zone. 20 mile per hour zones exist for a very good reason, namely, to preserve life, and to reduce the risk of serious injury, particularly to youngsters. Twelve, park and ride to hospital. When parking anywhere, do not blindly throw the door open and jump out. Sooner or later, you will die. Thirteen. Loads of room. I can get through there. Passing any parked car too close is sooner or later going to cause you to crash and may cause you to kill. The person you kill will be stupid having just jumped out of their vehicle without looking at oncoming traffic and they are now dead. But it is your fault simply because you must always assume that someone will do this. So, never pass so close that you cannot stop if and when this does happen to you. If narrow roads or other circumstances force you to pass close, you must slow down. And you must assume some idiot will open the door of a parked car and hop out onto your path. He or she may be dead, but it is your fault as well. 14. Stay, don't sway. Motorways and lane discipline. This bit may vary a little from the strict advice of the highway code. 
with the exception of the outside overtaking lane, stay mostly in the lane that suits your speed compared to other traffic around you. Do not constantly move into the left lane and immediately out again. Accidents occur mostly when drivers weave in and out of the lanes. Smart motorways are now commonplace, and they bring new risks to drivers. On the same 16-mile stretch of smart motorway on the M1, there have been four nearside lane deaths in just 10 months, where an incident involving stationary vehicles was currently active. A number of smart motorways have had what was the hard shoulder removed, and turned into a live running lane, meaning that in the event of breakdown or a collision incident, if you have to stop, you are at high risk from live traffic approaching you at very high speeds. Traffic controllers may not be able to invoke red X gantry signage, to alert other traffic, for several minutes. A recent survey has reported that 20% of drivers are likely to ignore a red X gantry sign above the lane, meaning there is greatly increased risk as they approach any breakdown, any obstruction, or other danger, at very high speeds. If you break down, get out of your vehicle immediately, and get behind the metal barrier. Do this before calling for assistance. If you have a collision, or other incident requiring you to stop, quickly agree with any other party, to drive on to the next emergency refuge area, which should be no more than 1.5 miles ahead of you. Do not exchange owner details, until you reach the emergency refuge area. Or else, it could be the last thing you do. 15. Position for best viewing. Blind bends. For left-handers, take an approach position at the crown of the road to maximise the distance of your forward view. For right-handers, position yourself as near as possible to the left-hand curb to maximise view. This works on those awful rural country lanes as well. You see any hazards earlier than if you drive more centrally as you would normally on other roads. 16. Stay mobile. No mobile. Your mobile could kill you and others in just a couple of seconds. Glancing at your messages, those tedious inane messages that we all get, will likely put you and others into hospital, and that's if you're lucky. Don't make or take any calls while you are moving. Even hands-free is a major distraction. Avoid. The max you can take your eyes off the road is less than a second, even less if you are travelling at speed. Don't do it. And if you are a passenger in any vehicle where the driver does do it, get out of the vehicle, even if it's a taxi. Ditto satnavs. They are a godsend to help you find your destination. But they can also send you to God if they cause you to take your eyes off the road. Listen to sat-nav directions, but don't look. In a rush, pause the film here, then restart from this point later. 17. They've lost it. Losing control, not you, them. Drive on the basis that every vehicle in front and those behind and especially those coming in the opposite direction can lose control at any moment for a large number of reasons. Respect this fact and you may avoid a serious incident just by being alert.
18. He's behind you. Never, ever tailgate another vehicle, especially at speed. Click the pause control and take a little extra time if you want to read this content in full. Nineteen, the ripple stop on motorways. Peak volume traffic on motorways often causes some lanes to grind to a halt, whilst others are still moving well. This is dangerous, and the following traffic, you, needs to be always ready to slow down and even stop, whilst also leaving an escape gap between you and the vehicle in front because there remains danger behind you. If you find you are having to repeatedly slam on the brakes, you are not watching far enough ahead, and worse, you are driving too close. Twenty. I'm not going to tell you again. Never take your eyes off the road for more than half a second. Noisy kids in the back, resist turning around to eyeball them, since this is when you are at the highest risk of collision, which is not good for you or the children. Distractions whilst driving. Incident risks on the road ahead can change in the blink of an eye, even faster if you travel at higher speed. Many things will inevitably cause distraction to you as the driver, and during these moments you can be at four times more risk of being involved in an incident. You are undoubtedly a good driver, but not everybody is, and you need your wits to be sharp to avoid the poor driving standards of others. If you are involved in an incident, any passengers will be involved as well, the ones who may be the cause of the distraction. Boisterous antics by passengers in a moving vehicle can finish badly for all concerned. As the driver, you should take control and explain that you would prefer all to arrive safely at your destination. It is your responsibility as the driver to calm down any such antics that take your mind away from the road ahead. Here you can see a list of some common causes of distraction at the wheel, and all can be avoided. 21. Two wheels has priority. Sad, but true. Live with it. Cyclists are not the enemy. Give all cyclists a minimum one metre wide berth when overtaking. And remember, they are probably doing more than you towards saving the planet. 24. This info is only for new drivers having recently passed their driving test. The first two years of driving on the open roads after passing your test are exciting and liberating times. Be aware that you are still learning, and the law has very punitive penalties if during that first two-year period you choose to drive recklessly or badly. If you accrue six points or more on your license during these first two years, your license will be revoked, and you will be required to take your test again before being allowed a full driving license. These rules were brought in because of the high number of incidents new drivers are involved in during the early months when they are new to the road. If your license is revoked, inevitably your insurance premiums will rise significantly in line with the penalty points you have accrued. 
The points stay on your license for totting up purposes for minimum four years from the date of the offense, or date of conviction. So you are in for a very nervous period for some time to come. Drive sensibly and avoid points. 22. Clear on the right. Away we go. Whoa! T-junction. When you arrive at a T-junction, you would not dream of turning right before having looked very clearly both ways, would you? Be very sure that you apply the same logic when turning left. Too many drivers, when turning left in such a manoeuvre, seem to assume that there will be no traffic to their left and just drive out into the road after a cursory glance to their right. Do not do this, else sooner or later you will find yourself head-on with an oncoming overtaking car or bus or refuse truck, or worse, an ambulance, a police car, a fire engine, all of which you may now need. If you are short of time, pause the film here. Note the timeline point. Then restart here later. 23. Nothing coming. I can get past easily now. Clear ahead. Slowish vehicle in front of you. OK to overtake? Often no. Because ahead on the right is a T-junction and another vehicle is just about to drive into your path without having first looked to his or her left. So your path suddenly has a roadblock and you are about to experience a head-on collision at speed because you were accelerating to overtake. So before you start to overtake, make sure there are no T-junctions on the right ahead. If you are in an urban area, expect vehicles to also pull off their drive straight into your path. Yes, it's their fault, but you are the one in hospital, with them. 24. Gently does it. Enjoy the ride. Calm and smooth winds. Drive as if you had a glass full of water glued to the bonnet of your vehicle and where you will have to pay £10 for every two centimetres of lost water on every journey. You are allowed to blow £20 each month, but any more and you are driving badly and scaring your passengers as well as everyone else on the road or pavements. Drive with gentle acceleration and deceleration and foot off the gas taking corners, turns, roundabouts. Racing drivers all break going into any bend or turn and accelerate out of the turn. Adopt this but do it gently. Your passengers will benefit massively and you will gradually learn to enjoy being a good and considerate driver. 25. Retail Therapy Car Parks Go to Aldi and get much more than you expected. Retail car parks, indeed any such car parks, are an accident waiting to happen. Expect every possible hazard every time you use such a parking facility. Why? Because you will encounter other drivers that are driving way too fast down the aisles, Reversing out of a space without looking enough, without using their neck. Not seeing children passing behind their reversing vehicle. Children running out between parked vehicles cannot even be seen until it's too late. Poor parental control, I hear you say. Maybe yes, but it is your responsibility as a driver to expect this very regular occurrence and that this will happen and you just have to deal with it. The death or injury of a shopper or shopper's child will sadly be your fault. This applies anywhere, airports, 
town multi-storeys, arena concerts, train stations, etc. Twenty six. I have right of way. You stay back. Right of way is yours? Well, mostly no. Roads and streets with parked cars, sometimes on both sides, are a fact of life in our modern world, where families with two or three vehicles are not unusual. Where the road is narrow, this can cause problems for vehicles having to pass each other. Someone has to give way. Neither driver in either direction has a claim to right of way. Neither has any priority. The Highway Code clearly states that all drivers in such situations have to regard the available space as a narrow road and be courteous to each other and safe whilst passing each other alternately. Repeat, no one has any right of way, no matter which side of the road the vehicles are parked on and no matter how long the restricted width runs for with multiple parked vehicles in a line. Each driver coming in each direction has the same rights to the available space, namely none. So, drive with courtesy. The presence of skid marks is often a huge clue. Skid marks highlight near misses, mostly, but sometimes there isn't a miss, and any impact becomes effectively head-on, doubling the speed and the consequent effect to that floppy body we all occupy. Speed of 30 equals impact speed of 60. 40 equals 80. 50 equals 100. Any impact speed above 40 will result in a trip to the hospital, if you are lucky. 27. Cheers! Thank goodness some drivers still have manners. Thanks. Acknowledge any courtesy shown by other drivers in letting you out, letting you through, and add a smile or brief hand wave to say thank you. 28. Where did he come from? All vehicles have blind spots. Blind spots mean you may not be seen. So, do not settle in to drive in the blind spot on either side of another car in any multi-lane carriageway. The driver you are following is very likely to pull out or to pull in across you because the driver has not seen you because the driver is not using their mirrors or their neck enough. So, if you make a habit of sitting in the blind spot, sooner or later you will be involved in a collision caused by others' bad driving. But you could have avoided being involved. 29. Besides... Get ahead or drop behind. Don't drive parallel. On a dual carriageway or motorway, avoid finding yourself driving along in parallel to the vehicle or vehicles to your side or both sides if on a motorway. If there is any incident ahead, you have nowhere to go except to stop. If your position is staggered along the other traffic, you improve your chances and options if the situation ahead changes rapidly. 30. Going back to some trouble. Every time you engage reverse, think danger. If you reverse your vehicle off your drive or for any similar reason have to cross a pavement as you reverse, always assume that on the pavement, just a few yards ahead of his mum, is little five-year-old Jimmy on his brand new tiny skateboard. He is two foot tall. 
your boot, trunk, eye level is three foot tall. Do the maths. So, always assume little Jimmy is there and use your neck sufficient to make sure you do see him before ending his short life. Don't blame his mum. It is your fault if you ever do this for real. If you are pushed for time, pause the film here, note the timeline point, and restart here later. 31. Crossing any pavement, any time, stop and look first. Driving across any pavement, ensure that you stop and carefully look whenever it is necessary to drive across any pavement as you emerge from your driveway or from a retail exit after shopping. Especially if you are reversing, little Jimmy will one day be behind you and he cannot be seen with just a cursory glance. Any reversing, think, where is Jimmy? One day he will be there and you need to see him, not flatten him. Thirty-two. Fast equals points. Points do not equal prizes. Points equals pounds and lots of them. If you are a young driver or a new driver or even both, then the statistics show that there is a high likelihood you will experience an incident on the roads within your first 6 to 12 months on the road. If the incident results in injury and or damage, you will pay for this financially for many years of increased insurance premiums, if you can find an insurer. If you are injured, the consequences could be even worse. Driving too fast will result in points. Points do not mean prizes, not in this game. Click the pause control and take a little extra time if you want to read this content in full. Thirty-three. Satnav at eye level. Listen, don't look. Satnav. Whether using a dedicated satnav or a smartphone app, securely locate the satnav device at eye level within line of sight to your view whilst driving. Try to get a habit of listening to rather than relying on viewing the device. 34. Cut corners at your peril. Turning right off a main road. Never cut the corner off and never assume that you can complete the turn unless you have already looked down the turn and ensured your procedure to turn can be completed safely. Otherwise, you risk blocking the main road you are coming off and risking that the oncoming traffic will collide with you. You must check for pedestrians crossing the road you are about to turn into. The pedestrians always have right of way implicitly, even if they should have seen you coming. 35. Do not engage with the rage. Road rage idiots. It's a fact of driving life. Some drivers are idiots and will enrage you by their poor driving and ignorance and bad manners. Do not engage. Stay calm. Be assured the idiots will one day get their penalties. Do not chase. If they have behaved dangerously, try to get their vehicle registration and report them to the police the soonest chance you get, ideally instantly so that the police might actually be able to find them locally driving badly. 36. Pay up for a long time to come. 
your finances, your employment, your lifestyle will be seriously negatively impacted for years to come if you insist on being a bad driver. Your insurance will skyrocket. You may find yourself losing your job, the one that pays the bills. Your freedom will be limited to how well you are served by public transport and expensive taxis. It's too late after a serious incident that is your fault. The spectrum of drivers on our roads is indeed wide. On the one end of the spectrum sits the impatience and the impetulance of youth. At the other end of the spectrum sits the gradual erosion of our coordination faculties, caused through aging. Some young drivers begin their driving experience as inherently bad drivers, conversely, some elderly drivers, even at the very experienced level, can also demonstrate bad driving habits, and consequent risk. The AA Charitable Trust published a research study in September 2019 which concluded the following analysis of bad driving habits being responsible for incidents. Elderly aged 70 and above female drivers are three times more likely to be involved in a road accident than male drivers of equivalent age. Young aged 17 to 20 male drivers are three times more likely to be involved in a road accident than female drivers of equivalent age. So, there are clear gender differences also in play here. 37. Take a second to check before any manoeuvre. Rapid manoeuvres. Do not ever make any rapid manoeuvre that changes your road position quickly, except when trying to avoid a full emergency situation to avoid a collision. If you rapidly switch lanes, you cannot have checked fully that it is safe to do so. And if you have this habit, then sooner or later you will collide with another vehicle on your outside or inside blind spots. And it may be a 30-ton HGV vehicle, so guess who will come off worst? Our thanks to our eight product sponsors, who helped us to bring this film to you. 38. Cut fuel costs by 20% or more. A heavy accelerator foot costs you a fortune. If you insist on driving anywhere with your foot down on the accelerator pedal, you will need to spend 20 to 30% more on fuel. So it's not really clever, and most other road users will be thinking idiot as you fly past. Lewis Hamilton has sponsors paying for his heavy foot. In a rush, pause the film here, then restart from this point later. 39. One thing is certain, you will be caught. Speed traps. The systems used today by the police are smart and very often cannot be seen by you until they already have you in the bag. So you will get caught maybe several times before you learn the hard lesson that points bring to your life. A heavy foot to the accelerator will cost you in both points and in pounds as your fuel consumption will be 20 to 30% worse than if you drive gently and sensibly. Forty. Beware tracks on the road. They hold water. Tracks on the road? On many trunk roads, that's A roads and motorways in the main, the road surface of the leftmost inside lane gets compacted and worn down into a channel over time. And this can cause danger to all vehicles during heavy rain. The resulting channel is almost invisible in dry conditions. Water gathers in the tracks and forms a risk of low grip to all vehicles, but particularly lighter vehicles, where interference to both steering and braking can cause you to lose control. If you are forced to drive in a lane thus affected, maintain a larger gap to the vehicles in front, 
to give yourself a chance if anything goes wrong. This can occur across all lanes, but most often it's the near side lane where HGVs have worn away or compressed the surface. Even on an open road that is free of any other traffic, if you are driving fast within the speed limit, you can experience the aquaplaning effect, where your vehicle is effectively skating, almost even gliding above the surface. And when you lose grip, you are likely to lose control. Whether you end up in a field or the central reservation is a toss of the coin. Often you are in it before you realise. Just ease off the accelerator, don't break hard. Better to try to spot the risk early and slow down to be sure of retaining grip with the tarmac. Sixteen-year-old Cassie McCord lost her life when an elderly driver with poor vision mounted the pavement at speed causing Cassie's death. Following a campaign led by Cassie's mother, the law was strengthened to allow the police the power to require any driver at any time to carry out a sight test at the roadside. Effectively the same test which is a key part of the standard driving test, reading a vehicle number plate at 20 meters distance. The new law was called Cassie's Law as a memorial to Cassie McCord. Roadside eyesight tests are routinely carried out by several police force areas. Between mid-2014 and mid-2015 a total of 609 drivers failed the roadside test and so had their driving license revoked. Whether you wear spectacles or not, every driver should arrange an eye test with a local optician every two years at least, and even more frequently for elderly drivers or those with strong prescriptions. Good eyesight is absolutely critical to safe driving. 41. Too close for comfort, your passenger's comfort. Golden rule. If you find yourself regularly braking hard, you are clearly driving too close and you will come unstuck sooner or later. And in the meantime, you are probably scaring the crap out of your passengers on every journey. Click the pause control and take a little extra time, if you want to read this content in full. 42. Stay out of the Pratt Club. Give way dotted lines. At any junction that has a dotted line, stay behind the dotted line until you have seen that it is safe to emerge. Don't be that prat that sticks the nose of their vehicle two foot into the major road and only then starts to look at oncoming vehicles. Forty three. Avoid becoming a roadblock all by yourself. Roadblock caused by you. Don't block the through access of other motorists at traffic lights or on roundabouts. If your way forward is blocked, leave a gap to permit cross movement of other vehicles. 44. Keep metal away from humans. Humans are made of soft, floppy, fleshy materials and a few easily broken frames called bones. Vehicles, by contrast, are made of heavy, solid metals. Always expect humans, especially very young humans, to do stupid things. Your job as a driver is to keep your vehicle away from any human. 
who helped us to bring this film to you. If you are short of time, pause the film here. Note the timeline point. Then restart here later. 45. So neither of you can see safely. Not smart. Do not block the view of another driver waiting to pull onto a main road at a T-junction. Whether the vehicle is turning left or right onto the main road, if you pull up alongside, then the other driver cannot see safely and neither can you. The result would be two vehicles which are likely to emerge blind and cause a collision with fast-moving traffic already on the road. It is bad manners and it is dangerous. Don't do it. Ensure the driver in position to turn first can see in both directions and await your turn to turn. Forty six. Your own full beam could send you to casualty. Your own full beam headlights could cause your death. This applies on pretty much any single carriageway road, but especially on narrowing, winding rural roads at night. If you forget to dip your lights, the result is that the driver heading towards you at 30 to 60 miles per hour is driving blind and is very annoyed, which means a serious potential for a head-on collision at between 50 and 100 miles per hour, assuming that both drivers slow down a little before the collision occurs. Everyone in both vehicles will finish up in hospital or worse. 47. Rural roads are pretty, but rural winding roads are pretty, pretty dangerous. Just because you might be legally allowed to drive at 60 miles per hour on a country road doesn't mean you should, nor that it can be considered safe. Most serious incidents occur on these types of road. The problem stems from the fact that the width of the road hops between just about adequate to unexpectedly narrow and with no warning signage. The absence of a central dotted white line is a major clue to the risk you are running. If you don't know the road well, be very cautious when on such a road. There will be stretches where two vehicles simply cannot pass safely at speed. Both will need to slow right down or risk joining the herd in the adjacent field. You will often see lots of skid marks on the tarmac, some even on the straight stretches, more often on bends. Most skid marks indicate a near miss incident. With some skid marks, the near miss didn't occur. Instead, a head on collision took place simply because one or both drivers failed to slow in order to pass safely. Forty eight. Patchy fog is a killer. Slow down the second you see it. Dense, patchy fog is a real killer, especially at dusk or at night, very often in winter months, but also occurs in summer. Your forward vision is clear, but can become almost completely blind at no notice. In daylight, you have a marginally better chance of spotting the danger early, just by being observant. At night, it is more difficult. When it happens to you, and it will, Start to brake, but try not to slam on, since this will make you vulnerable to being hit from traffic behind, and it may be heavy vehicles behind. As you slow, be ready to slam on emergency braking if another vehicle appears suddenly in front. Be very aware of what's coming at you from behind, and be ready to accelerate out of the way if you see you are about to be hit. This scenario is arguably the worst fear of most drivers. 
and it will happen during your time on the road. Forty nine. Where the heck is the uh, switch? Irregularly used buttons controls. Take time to familiarize yourself with some of those important dashboard or steering stock controls that you rarely use. When you really need them, you need them fast. First and foremost, the hazard lights button. You may need to hit this in a real emergency situation, so you need to know where the button is, and this might save your life by itself. Other similar controls include rear fog lights and front fog lights. You probably know without thinking how to switch audio tracks or radio stations without a thought. It needs to be the same for these controls. Click the pause control and take a little extra time if you want to read this content in full. During December 2018, an assistant chief constable was involved in a head-on collision. In attempting, whilst driving, to answer an incoming phone call, using the inbuilt Bluetooth hands-free, she was distracted trying to locate the relevant call answer button on the steering wheel of her new Mini Countryman. She strayed onto the wrong side of the road and collided with an oncoming vehicle, forcing it off the road and incurring injuries to the occupants of the other vehicle. So, the consequences of ignorance on this can be significant. For example, injuries and vehicle damage to innocent third parties, plus, in this case incurring seven points on her driving license and £1,460 in fines and costs. 50. That was our exit. Saws. Hell's teeth, this is my exit. If you are distracted when driving on a motorway or dual carriageway, there will come a time when, far too late, you will realise that you are just about to pass the slip road exit you need. The temptation is to hit the brakes and to rapidly move left before the hatchings or even on the hatchings. It is simply not possible to do this safely and there is a very high risk that you will collide with a very fast-moving vehicle, car or HGV, that is on the slip road legally and correctly. Such a manoeuvre places many vehicles at instant risk. This is bad enough when you are driving on the left lane, but even worse if you are driving in the centre lane or the outside lane. If you try to exit stage left quickly, you will likely exit the planet as well as the road you are on. Don't do it. Swallow your pride and trek on to the next exit. Just slowing down hard to think about your options can start an accident ripple that affects not just you, but half a dozen vehicles behind you and either side of you. If you are stupid enough to try this, you are playing Russian roulette with everyone in and around your car. If you are pushed for time, pause the film here, note the timeline point, and restart here later. control and take a little extra time if you want to read this content in full. There is a lot, but it is very useful info.
The more you drive, the more likely you are to see some very strange maneuvers undertaken by some drivers. Often with very little warning. Thankfully you will not see these every day. You will see them over time, and we hope that this film will help you to be ready for most things that do happen. Relax and enjoy your time at the wheel. You can enjoy driving well. But stay alert, keep your distance, and use your neck as well as your eyes, to know what's happening all around you. Courtesy and manners on the road costs you nothing. But they do add to your overall enjoyment, and to the driving experience in general. Excessive speed will not usually get you anywhere faster. Except perhaps to A and E. And too fast and too close will frighten your passengers, whose health is in your hands. In creating this film, we are on a mission, to reduce the impact of road incidents in terms of injuries or worse. We hope you have enjoyed watching this film. If you did, tell your friends and tell your family, we need to have them on board as well. One day, they will thank you. Meanwhile, bon voyage, and safe home.